Hello everyone, welcome to our presentation about our paper in the NELM workshop. So my name is Mazen, I am a PhD student at the Technical University in Klaustal. And today I will be presenting to you our paper about uh, improving NELM algorithms using data information. Hopefully this would be useful for all of you. Thanks for joining and let's get going. Okay, so if we take a look at the average energy consumption per each day of the week for some data sets, so in this case we are looking at the blonde data sets, which has been captured in a university building. And here you can see a different color for each day of the week, where each day has been averaged over all, all days of the week. So for instance, Monday here represent all Mondays in the data set and so on. And here clearly we can see there is a, a pattern. So we are, we are looking at the total energy consumption and we can see as the week proceed. So toward the end of the week, especially on Friday, you can see that the total energy consumption is dropping down. And on Saturday, on, Saturday, on Sunday, so on weekends, usually the energy consumption is pretty low. So just by looking at this, as, as this diagram or this plot, we have some intuition that we may need to treat week work days different than weekends and holidays. So that's the main idea behind our paper actually, it's how we can treat this different kinds of days dif uh, separately. So maybe we can improve also the performance of the NELM algorithm that has that, that, that don't need to, to deal with this kind of Fermi function. So we try to be as agnostic as possible to the algorithm itself. We didn't change the algorithm, but rather we only change the input based on this type of information. And this is where also the day type information came from in the title of our paper. Okay, it's not always the case in, <coughs> in, in university buildings, but it seems also the case in industrial settings. So here we are looking at the hype data set, which has been captured in a factory as far as I know. And here also you can see a pattern. It's not as clear that the average consumption is dropping down during the work days, but at least on Saturday on Sunday, clearly the average consumption is much lower than the work days. And finally, we take a look at the residential setting, which is one with the most popular setting as far as I know in the NELM research. And here we are looking also as a very pretty popular data set, UK DEL, has been used in multiple previous researches. And here we can see somehow that's not as, as 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 unique as we saw in the previous cases. So here we can see that during the work days, the total energy consumption uh, jumps towards the evenings, which if, if you have a working family, so the, the family joins at the evening maybe, and that's, uh, this explains this behavior. And on the holidays <coughs> or weekends, we can see that there is uh, consumption that scatters all over the day. So here we, add, we also have some different types of patterns if we want to classify them between weekends and work days, but they are not as the same in the previous data sets where they reflected uh, the work days where have, we, we, we have high energy consumption and weekends lower one. Okay, so here all of the previous plots that I showed you all together, so we can see the the two ones, uh, the, the, the one in the middle and the last one are for the blonde and hype data sets. And here we can clearly see that the energy consumption is much slower on the weekends, which is not the case in the case of UK deal, as you can see here. Okay, yeah, so as I mentioned before, that was the idea behind our paper. So how we can maybe split this type of formation and uh, based on this split, we can maybe improve the performance of, of the NELM algorithms without changing the algorithm itself, so agnostic to the algorithm. So we clustered uh, the, 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 the energy consumption data by day type. So here, for instance, uh, we clustered them by on days and off days, where off days we mean weekends and holidays. So we also looked at the country in which the data set has been captured and uh, identified holidays, so we also cluster them in the same off days cluster. So this is one clustering based on on off, as we called it here, based on work days and weekends. And we also looked at another clustering, which is the k-means clustering. And in this case, we just use the pretty famous k-means algorithm, 
with k equal to so we, we it would produce two clusters and the input was also each day by itself so the energy consumption the total energy consumption of each day by itself and here in the diagrams we can see uh, the the results of this clustering so we, the the average daily consumption for each cluster is presented here to the left and to the right based on the clustering algorithm that has been used uh, and the blue line represent the total energy consumption of all days so we can see here that in the case of blonde for instance that the two cluster the two clustering method agreed to some degree that in the sense that we have a cluster with high consumption which is cluster 2 in this case and cluster 2 is the majority cluster also in the k-means algorithm so they agree that they have this cluster with high energy consumption but uh, they don't agree about the off days cluster so here in the case of the off days cluster it's almost non-existent here so the energy consumption compared to the average consumption each day or the on days is pretty low but here the k-means algorithm chosen a cluster where the energy consumption is a bit higher so cluster one most likely also includes some on days in the case of k-means the case of hype we can the, the the two algorithms actually have the pretty similar in the case of what they have clustered so yeah we can see here the one cluster is almost uh, for low, lower consumption another one is for higher consumption so it was much clearer case and the most difficult case in my opinion was the UK Dale week where we can see here towards the difference actually is toward the end of the week uh, of the end of the day sorry so in the case of k-means they that it, it based this clustering on on the on the fact how the energy consumption look at the end of the day which we also saw previously so during weekdays we had higher consumption only at the end of the day and this was the case for k-means so it choose cluster 2 which is the majority cluster where this consumption is higher toward the end of the day and cluster 1 where this con consumption is lower and in the case on on off days it didn't pay much attention or the, the clustering method didn't cluster uh, the data set such there is a difference in the in the late hours of the day but rather during uh, the the, uh, the 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 days the uh, the working hours let's say so from 8 to about 16. okay so yeah this is the average per cluster and we can see that there are some differences especially in the case of uk daily where the other uh, clustering method may be justified okay as i mentioned before our our method we tried as much to be agnostic to the actual algorithm that has been used so we choose tier few popular NIL models that has already been uh, used and proved themselves especially in the case of sequence to sequence and sequence to points which are considered among the state of the arts models for NIL we also used a pretty famous model required neural networks we also used uh, some new models so residential neural network and load disaggregation with attention based on bidirectional lo uh, long short term memory. So we use this five models. Okay, how we employed this model? So the first training setup, we just trained a baseline model. And as you expect here, we split our data after pre-processing it and making sure that the data is split by day into training and testing sets. So 70% training, 30% testing. We trained a model where the model is any one of the five models that we've seen previously on the training subset and we tested on the test subset and we reported the results on this test subset okay for the on off days and we also named the other training stuff key both in this case we trained two models so first of all we applied the clustering to our full data set so we got cluster one and cluster two so where each one of one for the for the case on, on off days one of them is the on days one of the off days and then we uh, split each cluster by itself into training and testing subsets and for each cluster we trained a different model and we tested on the uh, test subset for the corresponding model so depending on the day whether it's in cluster one or cluster two we use the corresponding model to produce uh, the predictions on that subset okay and we had the on days and key majority trust training setup and in this case we only had one model that has been trained on the majority class so if cluster one includes the majority of the data we had trained only one model on the training subset uh, of that cluster and then we use the same model to testing on both cases and the 
rationality behind the setting is that we notice that sometimes this could produce better results because we can consider the training subset of the cluster 2 or the training data or cluster 2 in general as just a, a special case that distribute or doesn't contribute to better learning for the model so that was the rationality behind this setting and we used this for both clustering setup on days and k majority so for on days we only used on days here to train this model and for k majority we used the, the only the, the, the cluster with the with the higher number of days that produced by the k means algorithm to train this model and we use this model then to test on the whole data set so on the full test data set from the full data regardless of which cluster okay and finally here we had also the setting which is baseline and off days so in this case we combined the baseline model which has been training on the full training subset of the data and an off model where so in this case we also wanted to treat this off days specially but we also wanted the baseline model to have information about of this or about off days so the model one is the full baseline model and then yeah we trained the off model only on the off days in this case and then we tested it on off the off uh, on the off days and for the on days we use the baseline model which has been trained on the full data to uh, produce the predictions for the test subset of the on days cluster okay and here are our results so this is let's say three dimensional table so we have first of all each data set on its own here and then we have each model that we use so sequence to point sequence to sequence recurrent neural network then for based on a residential uh, residential network and then the network based on attention and uh, bi-directional lstm yeah and the first again the first data set was the uk deal residential data set plant the university and hype which has been captured in a factory and here we see the each training setup that we use so the baseline model here and k majority k both on days on on off days baseline and off days so yeah this uh, the k majority and on days represent the setting where we trained only one model k both and on off days present the setting where we trained two models for each cluster and finally this baseline and off days training setting where we use the baseline to to test on the full data set and uh, off days model to that has been trained only on off days to produce predictions for the off days okay and the numbers here are in mean absolute error so lower values are better and here the percentage are always compared to the baseline model so we looked only in each data set on itself because it won't be fair to compare between different data sets if whether there's an improvement or not okay and uh, as we can see here in almost all cases we are able to achieve improvement rather than baseline model which is pretty interesting to know that it's it, treating this two kind of days differently is helpful of any algorithm regardless of, of whether how it's exactly implemented although all of them are based on our network we must say here okay so for the case of plant there was a clear winner so in this case the k majority produced always better result than the baseline model and this is contributes to our assess or our assumption that there is that treating this days differently and in this case leaving the weekends all together or that the cluster with the lower number of of, uh, of days of are produced by the k means algorithm leaving this cluster all together and training only on the majority cluster is able to produce better result than the baseline model although this model itself also has been tested on the on the on the on the off days or the cluster the second cluster days in this test data set and this also has implication about uh, not only that we have one model to train here but we we also have fewer data also for training so this also accelerate training uh, training uh, step and still produce better result than the baseline model which has been trained on the full data okay if we take a look at the hype data set we can see here the clear winner is the last setting except for uh, the residential neural network where we achieved better result with the on off day setting and also here also again we, we see that there must be a special treatment for this off days so if we in this case if we consider a special model to 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 produce the results of our off days we can achieve better results in this case we don't have a single model we have two models we need two models in this case 
beside the baseline model to improve its results but still this is simple model trained only on subset of the data and only produce the results for the off days okay finally and in my opinion the most interesting setting which was the residential setting where we can't see a clear winner here but at least we can see that depending on each type of model there is some setting uh, that's can, that, that that would improve the baseline result except for the recurrent neural networks where all of our setup didn't improve on the baseline model so here at least for the sequence to point we can see that k both improved the, the result by about five percent and for the sequence to sequence uh, the k majority improved the result by by, by about four percent so this is also interesting to know so if you are trying to improve the uh, disaggregation performance of your algorithm maybe take a look at the data set itself just leaving out the, the 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 subset of the data especially if you clustered by by day where the where the consumption is lower may may improve the result on itself okay that was our findings in this paper i i hope that you find this somehow useful in your research and i hope i can improve also on this result and make use of it maybe integrating it into the the, the neural network structure itself in a, and hopefully in a future research so yeah that was it from my side i'm happy to answer any question that you may have either by email or chat and i hope you have a nice rest of the day and enjoy the rest of the workshop okay thanks a lot for your time and maybe see you in person next year hopefully okay